I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons first. Thank you so much to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Howlers, and my Biblio Mansers. It means a lot to me that you give me your extra support for my passion and hobby. Hi everyone, uh, Patek here. It is the end of the month of June, so it is time to talk about all the books that I bought and all the books that arrived to my uh, Patrick Leo's uh, library this month. We are finally halfway through the year. I know time flies way too fast, way too fast. And remember in my uh, book haul video uh, last month, I talked about how insane it is that I actually got 40 books last month. 40 physical books last month. And I thought uh, this month it, I would have much lesser quantity of books arriving to my place. Apparently not, because this month I got 30 physical books. I went out of control, not gonna lie. Apparently all the books that I bought, uh, not all of them, but many of them arrived this month, including the books, the last books that I bought from Book Depository and also some books that I bought from my local bookstore. I went out of control really. And you know what? I will not regret this because Book Depository has closed down. So this is my last order from Book Depository. So I might as well start by talking about the books that I bought first. And yeah, let's start from these three books that I bought from Book Depository. The last three books that I bought from Book Depository, it is uh, the box set for Ark of a Sight by Neil Shusterman. So this one uh, is an, I think it is a YA dystopia or YA sci-fi uh, series, but I heard it is incredible and it should be suitable to those uh, adult fantasy and adult sci-fi readers as well. And because I heard so many great things about uh, Ark of a Sight by Neil Shusterman, and I saw that this was price a discount, so I might as well get this. I think I got this box set for about, I think, 25 US dollars. So yeah, that's really a good price uh, for me. So thank you so much, Book Depository, for all that you have done. Because, well, I've been buying books from Book Depository for, well, ever since I began reading fantasy novels. So for almost seven years now. So yeah, it is sad to say goodbye to Book Depository. But again, some good things must come to an end sometimes. And unfortunately, it is this one. Other than those three, I bought six books from my local bookstore. And the first one is Gleanings by Neil Shusterman. This is a collection of short stories that takes place after the end of the Ark of a Side trilogy. So yeah, I made, uh, I'm making a gamble here by buying the entire series before even starting reading uh, the books, the first book. But hopefully this, uh, hopefully this will result in something great uh, for my reading experience whenever I get around to reading Ark of a Side by Neil Schusterman. Also, I really love the cover art and the cover design for this series. So yeah, it is hard to resist. And then the next book that I bought is a completion to a trilogy. And this is the Sorcerer's Song trilogy. Yes, this is the third book of the trilogy, The Swords Elegy by Brian D. Anderson. And yeah, the cover art is done by Felix Ortiz. I have read the first two books. I really love uh, the first book of the series, uh, The Bard's Blade. I think it is incredibly underrated. And I hope this one will prove to be a satisfying conclusion to the trilogy. I actually ordered this one from Book Depository, but it still hasn't arrived to my place. So I might as well uh, get this from my local bookstore. There are other books uh, with similar situation like this one, but I cannot blame Book Depository for this because again, well, their store is closing down and I cannot uh, complain too much about this. And then the next book that I got is uh, The Wolf by Leo Carew. I think that's how to pronounce the name. I already own the second book, uh, The Spider, but I don't have the third book yet. I think the title is The Cuckoo. Yeah, I don't have that book yet, but I finally got the copy of The Wolf, the first book in the trilogy. Hopefully I will end up loving this series. I heard that uh, this one should be suitable to those who love A Song of Ice and Fire by George Martin. I have no idea whether that's accurate or not because there are so many series that usually deem as suitable to those who love A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. But I think uh, as far as rating and reception goes for The Wolf and also the entire trilogy, I think on booktube, there has been more positive reception for this one uh, compared to the one on Goodreads. I think on Goodreads, uh, the reception and the reviews for this trilogy has been a bit mixed. But hopefully, I will end up loving this one because, well, his name is Leo Carew. So, well, he shared the same name as me because my name is Patrick Leo. <laughs> I know that's supposed to be unimportant, but, well, it matters, okay? And then the next book that I got, it recently came. And this is for uh, Nona the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. I know. I know, I have mentioned plenty of times that there is a really good chance I will not continue reading the Lock Tomb series by uh, Tamsin Muir because I have such uh, a negative feelings and uh, thoughts regarding Harrow the Ninth, the second book in the series. But this one, uh, the price was really good. And also I love the cover art done by Tommy Arnold. 
the cover art for the entire series looks really good. Tommy Arnold is one of my favorite cover artists. And because it's cheap, who knows, maybe someday my reading mood to try this series again might appear. So I might as well get this first for now. And speaking of third book of a series, another one that I got is another completion to a trilogy and it is The Golden Enclaves by Naomi Novik. I do not have the first book yet, but I already own uh, the second book. And now it's time for me to get the third book of the series. Whether I will end up loving this one or not, I am not sure. I need to read Deadly Education first. But so far, my rating and also my statistic with Naomi Novik's books is 50-50 uh, right now because I absolutely hate Uprooted. I love Speeding Silver. Hopefully, uh, this series, Colomance, will be the tiebreaker, the great tiebreaker. And finally, the last book that I bought that arrived this month is A Gentleman in Moscow by Emmer Tolis. Tolis. Not sure how to pronounce the name, but this one, I heard so many amazing things about it. And one of my co-bloggers, Celeste, actually told me that this reminded her of reading uh, Carlos Ruiz Zafon's prose. And I think that's one of the best praise you can ever give to a book. I love Carlos, uh, Carlos Ruiz Zafon's writing, and I look forward to reading this. Uh, yeah, this one has received so many awards, so many acclaims. And right now, I think there's a movie adaptation being produced for this one with Ewan, Ewan McGregor starring as the main character in A Gentleman in Moscow. Hopefully that movie will come true and hopefully I will be reading this one before that movie adaptation uh, come out. So that's the nine books that I bought that arrived this month. Now let's talk about the books that were gifted to me. I have three books to showcase today and the first one is God Killer by uh, Hannah Kenner. Hannah Kenner. Uh, this one, I heard amazing things about it from Elliot Brooks. She did a great, great review on this book and um, one of my friends on Instagram, uh, he messaged me on DM saying that he wants to send me an extra copy of God Killer that he has. So thank you so much to Jiyun for sending me a copy of God Killer. It looks beautiful and take a look at this and paper. Ta-da! This is not a special edition. But take a look at this. I think it's really nice. The end paper is being illustrated by the same cover artist, uh, Tom Roberts. I think that's the name of the artist. And on top of uh, sending me the book, he also sent me this beautiful letter. Feel free to pause the screen if you want to read what the letter contains. But again, I'm really grateful every time I receive a letter saying something as good as this. For the next two books that I got, both of them were sent to me by Evie. Evie is a fellow booktuber and make sure to check out her channel. I think she is awesome. Evie has been well known to be one of the most generous uh, reader and fellow friends on booktube. And well, I am not surprised why she keeps getting that recognition because she sent me these two books. The first one is The Vanished Birds by Simon Jimenez. I heard so many wonderful things about this supposedly emotional standalone sci-fi uh, novel. Other than that, I don't know anything about the story and I really want to enter this story without knowing anything about it. Other than being that it is good though, because uh, if I end up loving this one, I really want to talk about this book together with Evie, whether on my YouTube channel or on her YouTube channel. And on top of The Vanished Birds, she also sent me another copy of another book by Simon Jimenez and it is uh, The Spear Cuts Through Water. Look at this. This is super beautiful. Love the cover art so much. It is so blue and green and uh, just like God Killer earlier, this one also comes with a beautiful and paper. Unlike The Vanished Birds, The Spear Cuts Through Water is an epic fantasy standalone instead of sci-fi, but I heard many incredible things about this one too, so I think Simon Jimenez might be an author to watch out for. Plus, I always I always love having more great standalone novels to read. Standalone in sci-fi, especially in fantasy, great standalone novels, they are quite rare to find. So yeah, hopefully these two, uh, The Vanished Birds and also The Spirit Cuts Through Water will be a new favorite uh, for me. Thank you so much to Evie for sending me these books. So that's 12 books in total for now. And now let's talk about the self-published fantasy books that were sent to me. I will be talking about five books today. Uh, the first one is a debut novel. I Last Reach by Francisca Liliana. This is the first book in the Breadth and Depths duology, and the cover art is done by Felix Ortiz. This book is out now, and Francisca Liliana is a fellow uh, fan of Lycanius trilogy, and I think that is a great thing. And on top of that, she is also a book reviewer and book blogger. And seeing that, she comes out with this debut, and so far, the reception for this one has been incredibly positive. I think that is a wonderful thing. I look forward to reading this one. I have sampled the first chapter. The writing is pretty good, so hopefully the rest of the book will be as good as the first chapter, or even better. 
And speaking of debut novel, the next self-published fantasy book I got is another debut novel and it is Obsidian Awakening by Sienna Frost. Uh, supposedly, this is the first uh, signed copy of Obsidian to ever be sent to a book reviewer. So thank you so much to Sienna for sending me a copy of it. And this book actually came in a super nicely wrapped uh, package. And it was a kind of painful for me to actually open because it's just so neat, neatly wrapped. And yeah, uh, thank you so much to Sienna for sending me this one. I heard this is a grimdark fantasy novel. And you know that I'm a fan of grimdark fantasy. Character-driven fantasy stories and also grimdark fantasy are some of my favorite uh, books to read. And if you are on Twitter, you might have seen that this book is praised very loudly by plenty of grimdark fantasy fans. Looking forward to reading this one. I don't know when, but definitely will keep this on my radar of books to read, especially when I'm in, in the mood of character-driven grimdark fantasy novel. Also, it's very rare for me to find a book with this kind of design inside. Tada! There are plenty of illustrations inside this. And yeah, I think they are really nicely implemented to match together with the narrative uh, contained on the page. So a really nice touch from the author here. Hopefully, this will enhance my reading experience. And then the next self-published fantasy book I got is another debut novel, and it is The Return of the Knights by Gregory Cantasis. I have showcased this book on my YouTube channel many times now. I think this is the sixth time I've been talking about uh, The Return of the Knights, and it's kind of crazy that I still haven't read this book yet. But this one, uh, this is the special edition that comes with the spray edges. I think it looks really nice, so thank you so much to the author for sending me a copy of this one. And yeah, uh, this comes, hold on, sign and personalized to me. Hopefully, I will end up living it whenever I get around to it. We still have two more self-published fantasy books to talk about today. And the next one that I got, and this is a beautiful one. Take a look at this. This is Of Deeds Most Valiant by Sarah K.L. Wilson. So this cover art is beautiful, right? This one features a cover art done by Bastian Jess. So I'm going to make this even more pretty because, hold on. I need to be careful here. The naked hardcover Tada! Look like this. I think this actually looks even better than the cover art. Uh, do let me know what you think about this naked hardcover compared to the, well, this one, this cover art. I think this one looks better. Uh, the cover art to this one is done by Bastian Jess. And this one, I think, is done by Alice Duke. The author pitched this to be like Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir, but instead of necromancers, we have Paladin in an epic fantasy setting. So yeah, hopefully I will end up living this and I think this is uh, beautiful. It's so beautiful. I think this kind of hardcover is exactly why I frequently say that self-published fantasy books or indie uh, fantasy hardcovers tend to be more beautiful and more well-produced compared to a lot of standard traditionally published hardcovers. And yeah, again, this is proof. Finally, the last self-published fantasy book I got today, it is a weapon of destruction. It is a brick. It is not a book. And it is Of War and Ruin by Ryan Cahill. No joking, this is super heavy. I mean, take a look at this. Take a look at this. This is a brick. It is not a book. <laughs> okay. But I, I mean, it's guaranteed to be this thick because this book is 1000 pages long and on Kindle, it is 1400 pages long. The book is almost, uh, I think the book, the size is 430,000 words long, if I'm not mistaken. It is bigger than A Storm of Swords, slightly bigger compared to A Storm of Swords by George R.R. R. Martin. Yeah, it is one of the biggest fantasy books that I have read, and this is uh, one of my favorite books of the year so far. It is definitely Ryan Cahill's best book so far in his career. So thank you so much to Ryan for sending me a copy of this one. If you haven't read the Bun and the Broken series yet, if you love epic classic fantasy that is told, in a modern narration and modern voice, you are missing out if you haven't read The Bound and The Broken yet. I think uh, this is the next classic Dragon Rider epic fantasy in the making. And also, I think this is the first time I actually appear on the back cover here. So thank you so much. Uh, this is an honor for me to be included in your book, Ryan Cahill. And speaking of Dragon Rider epic fantasy, this book just came. I just received Defiant, the third book in the Songs of Chaos by Michael R. Miller. And that means I am now ready to tackle Ascendant, Unbound, and Divine. I hope that this will be one of my new favorite series again because uh, I heard that this should be suitable to those who love uh, Dragon Rider, epic fantasy like Ryan K. Hill's books, and also Dragon Mage by M.L. Spencer. Take a look at this cover art though. I really love the cover art. I think Randy Vargas did an excellent job with the cover art for the second book and the third book. And for the remaining 13 books in today's book haul video, 
All of them were traditionally published books sent to me by either traditionally published authors or publishers. Let's start by, from the two that were sent to me by authors first. Uh, the first one is The Surviving Sky by Kritika H. Rao. I think this is an Indian-inspired fantasy novel. I haven't read this one. I heard plenty of great things about this. Just like what is seen on the cover art there, I think the blurb mentions something like this. A high above a jungle planet float the last refugees of humanity. Pan-med civilizations held together by tradition, technology, and arcane science here. Architects are revered deeply with humanity's survival reliant on a privileged view. If not for their abilities, the cities would plunge into the devastating earth rage storms below. And yeah, I think uh, this sounds interesting. Hopefully I will love this because uh, I have read plenty of South Asian and Indian inspired fantasy novel like Sons of Darkness by Gaurav Mohanty and I love them. So hopefully I will end up loving The Surviving Sky as well. And Surviving Sky is not the only Asian-inspired fantasy novel I got. Here's another one, uh, Ebony Gate by Julia V and Ken Bebel. Uh, this one is the first book in the Phoenix Horde, and the authors and the book has pretty much pitched this book as John Wick with Dragon Magic. I love John Wick, I love Dragon Magic, I love Asian-inspired fantasy, and hopefully I will love this one. Seriously though, if you check out the premise of this one, even it sounds like John Wick, but I think uh, only the premise might be similar, but the content might be different. And moving on to the next one, Orbit Books sent this book to me. Uh, this is Perilous Times by Thomas D. Lee. And yeah, I think this is an Arthurian retelling that, is, uh, that takes place in our world in our setting. The cover art is really beautiful. It reminded me of Terry Pratchett's cover art and apparently this is done by the same cover artist as one of the cover artists who did a Terry Pratchett's book. And here it's written, uh, in perilous times like this, the realm doesn't just need a hero. It needs a knight in shining armor. Perilous times is a fiercely entertaining contemporary take on the myths of Camelot, which ask what happens when the knights of the round table return to fix the problems of the modern world. And this debut novel is perfect for fans of Teddy Pratchett, Neil Gaiman, and Ben Aronovich. And I haven't read all of them except for Neil Gaiman. I felt a bit mixed on Neil Gaiman's books usually, so hopefully I will end up reading Perilous Times sooner than I expected, and hopefully I will end up loving this. Again, really love the cover to this one. Thank you so much to Orbit Books for sending me a copy of it. Hopefully I will end up loving the content as much as the cover art. And before we talk about the last nine books that were sent to me by a literary agent, I want to showcase a special edition first. Of course, this is for Call of the Bone Ships by The Broken Binding. Well, by RJ Barker, but this is The Broken Binding edition. I have showcased you in my last month video, The Bone Ships, uh, The Broken Binding edition. And this is the sequel, Call of the Bone Ships. And yeah, of course, this one features this beautiful, beautiful artwork again on the spray edges uh, done by Kachina Paints. And yes, it comes with this absolutely stunning and paper by Kachina Paints. And this naked hardcover is beautiful as well. I think Kachina Paints, she's been doing a lot of great jobs for The Broken Binding and I hope she will continue to do more beautiful artworks for The Broken Binding and hopefully many other authors as well because I think her artwork, her style is very distinctive and yeah, I just love this. Take a look at this. This is the front end paper and this is the back end paper. Hold on. Ta-da! And for the remaining nine books in today's book haul video, all of them were sent to me by, well, Brandon Sanderson, Agent, Brandon Sanderson, and many other authors. So I requested for these books. Thank you so much to Jabber Walkie for sending me all these nine books. And the first one that I got is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. So this is, I think, a horror or mystery novel. I don't know too much about this, but I kept on seeing people praising Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia so many times for the past two years. And so, I really want to try reading this book. Plus, it's short. I think this is only about 300 pages. Also, I don't know if you know this, but this actually comes with a beautiful front page. Ta-da! It's so retro, right? It's like a retro horror. I love it. It's beautiful. And yeah, I look forward to reading this. Thank you so much to Jabber Woki for sending me a copy of Mexican Gothic. And this is not the only horror novels that I got. I also got this one. Uh, hold on. This says, How to Sell a Haunted House by Gregory Hendrix. I have no idea whatsoever regarding the content of this book, but many people praised it and I might as well request for it. And this is not the only book by Grady Hendrix that I got. I got another one here and this is called uh, The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slay Vampires. I think that is one of the longest book titles 
ever. And yeah, uh, Gr Grady Hendrix has been praised quite a lot uh, lately, especially in the horror landscape. So hopefully, uh, although I don't read a lot of horror books, hopefully whenever I feel like I'm in the right mood for it, I will give it a try and hopefully I will love this. I keep on saying hopefully I will love this, but of course, I, that's what I want from every book that I want to read. And finally, for the remaining six books that I got, this is one series, an entire series that I requested because I heard so many amazing things about this series. This is for The Memoirs of Lady Trent by Mary Brennan. Yes, this is the entire six books. The series consisted of five books from this one, A Natural, a Natural History of Dragons up to Within the Sanctuary of Wings. And this is uh, Turning Darkness into Light as a spin-off. I think it is a sequel spin-off centering on a different character, not uh, Lady Trent. All the cover art of the series, all of them are done by uh, Todd Lockwood, which is an amazing artist, and inside these books, all of them has interior artworks by Todd Lockwood himself. Hold on, I'm going to show one of them here. Tada, something like this. Of course, I have to request physical copies of this series, and yeah, I don't know whether I will be able to get around to reading a memoir of Lady Trent within this year. A Sarah from Sarah Reads has been praising this series intensely, and I think that is a great thing. I love her taste in books. I think Murphy has also told me that this is one of the most criminally underrated fantasy series. So if I cannot slip this series into my TBR pile this year, I will certainly make memoirs of Lady Trent, all of them, into my priority series uh, next year. So yeah, do let me know what you think about Memoirs of Lady Tread if you have read the series. I think it looks beautiful. Uh, the cover looks beautiful. The interior artwork as well. So that's it. That's all the 3D books that I got within the month of June. I want to say that uh, I think the month of July will not, uh, the, the number of books I got in the month of July will not be this high, but who knows, I could be wrong. <laughs> I'm still not over budget though because yes, I do plan my budget for book buying uh, every year. Last year, I definitely failed because last year I went even more out of control when it comes to buying books. And this year, I still succeed at controlling my expense when it comes to buying books. Hopefully, I will be able to maintain that until the end of the year. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it though. Do let me know what you think about all the books that I got uh, this month. Uh, let me know how many books you got within this month. And as always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.